Hello, Jim Hodges here, Yoshi here. Yoshi is a five-year-old rescue, Corgi, Border Collie, Aussie mix, came in for our residency training program. Our owners have done a real good job with obedience. The biggest thing with Yoshi here is meaning what we say when we give obedience. What do I mean by that? Dogs live in a physical world. I talk about it all the time. When two dogs get together, they don't sit there and yap, yap back and forth. They're usually uh, initiating physical contact, biting, jumping, bumping, posturing, being very physical. That's the way they communicate. That's the way I believe they communicate, and I've been doing this over 20 years, okay? So when we tell our dog that he's being good, we want to pet him. We want to use treats. We do treats, pet, love at the same time, and verbally, good boy, okay, when we do it. When he does something wrong, we need to touch him that way too. It's touch, it's a tap of the leash, and touch, and go from there. It could be a touch like this. It could be a number of different types of touch. But the touch is all designed to do one thing, imitate life in a dog pack, okay? Because that's how they communicate. When we're consistent with that touch, we start to teach our dog what our words mean so they carry more weight in real life when they're not on a leash, okay? So, so important. It's been raining off and on. It's actually raining right now. I'm going to try to go through and get through this obedience real quick. If he messes up, he's sitting right now. I'm not asking him to sit, but he does not like to sit or lay down on the wet ground. Now, I can't say that I blame him, but if I ask him to do it, he must do it. And that's where we have to be benevolent leaders and don't put him in a position that he can get sick or hurt, uh, all for the sake of obeying us, okay? So we're going to move through things, get a good idea. It's important, and I'll talk about it while we're going. All right, Yoshi, let's go. That boy. He is a very treat-motivated dog, so I may pop out a treat every once in a while, but more importantly, that boy, let's go. Okay, he wants to uh, listen and leave. Sit. That boy, good boy. So sit, be sit. We better hold it. Yes, thank you so much. One of the things with you, he would bounce out of it. If he bounced out of the sit right now, it would be no, sit. A little tap straight up, saying no at the same time. If he didn't sit, it would be no, sit. Break. If he starts at one time, anytime he misses a command, especially one of your concerns is you'll give him a command and he doesn't always hold it. So we have to be very consistent in what we're doing. So we give him a command, he does it, good boy. If he gets up, we're going to bite. Remember, if he does it once, he's going to do it over and over again. I tell clients all the time, when that happens, if it's something you like, put a word to it, you've got a new trick or command. If it's something you don't like, you've got to be ready to provide a consequence, a touch. A touch that's enough for him to understand, without you being too heavy-handed, uh, what to do, okay? So we tell him to sit. If he doesn't sit, I think you said it was like 40 50% or that might have been something else but we're going to be ready to bite, okay? Just like that. No, sit. And we're going to work at that. So we're going to tap at a very light level. We're not going to pull. When we pull, we do the work for him. We must tap, okay? We tap, no, and repeat the command. If he continues on on that particular command and we have to tap, he's telling, and we're consistent, he's telling us that what we're doing is not enough for him to listen not enough for him to pay attention to us and, and look at the outside world. Then we go from level one to a little tighter, level two. I hope that makes sense. We talked about it in our training, and uh, we're talking about it again now. You must commit to this. If you're not going to do it, it's no use even going through this process because you're going to create a dog that becomes very frustrated and stressful and not knowing who you are on a, a given day. All right, let's go. Good boy, you stayed in that sit for a long time, didn't you? Notice my hand signal, sit. Good boy. Break. Atta boy, pet. I'm actually going to give him a little treat. Good. Let's go. Sit. Oh, I changed my mind. Down. Hand signal from the side, down. Down means down. Okay, he's got to stay in that down until I release him. If he starts to get up, what are we going to do? We're going to come down and we're going to go, no, down. Good boy. And we're going to start that same process that I just talked about with the sit, okay? Good boy. Break. Sit. In front. Down. Good. Let's go. Now, one of the things that uh, we want to make sure we do with Yoshi 
is apparently he's got a fascination for cats. It's not a big deal. He doesn't have to go up and meet them, but you do want to show him and teach him that cats are there, we are here, mine. Okay? Dogs, they're prey driven dogs. There's a video I did just the other day with a hunt driven dog. You know, dogs come with different temperaments and personalities. We're not going to remove those behaviors, but we can modify them, at least getting to the point that they will listen to us. And the way we do that is practice obedience, a minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, enough so that we're very consistent, he understands we're consistent, and has to pay attention, okay? So, so important. Let's go. So we're going to come right in. Come on. 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 Places, lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. I don't care what he does as long as he does it. Easy. Stays there. He doesn't chew on the bed. You can give him an antler. You can give him a yak snack. You can give him a toy. He's fine. He's got to stay there. He can easily do this for a couple hours at a time and pretty happy with it, okay? We've done multiple dogs with him at the same time, and he's done real well. Good boy. Remember, he is a treat-motivated dog, so we want to reward with treats sometimes for the best of the best, okay? We don't want to reward him all the time because he thinks that's the condition of his work. He's working because we asked him to do something, okay? Let's go. Oh. Down. So you notice I put him in a down, I kept walking. He is that smart. Here's my recall command. He comes, he sits, at a boy. I'm gonna give him a trick. He's gotta look, good boy, he's gotta look at me to get it. And a boy. Notice when I broke him all but once, and it's because I was moving then. Uh, break. He comes to me. I pet him. I love him. I am trying to teach that I'm the center of all things for him. Okay. And when he does come to me, I don't care if it's just in the house when we're sitting down taking it easy. Take a moment, pet him, and love him. Okay. Let him know that it's good that he wants to come up to you. When he makes eye contact, tell him good boy. Let him know. Sit. Good. That bordered on being a little slow. If that continued on, he did it. But if that continued on and it got longer and longer, then I would be ready for it. Remember, if he does it once, he's going to do it again and again. I'll be ready for it and be ready to provide a consequence or a bite, as I like to say. Next thing is the heel command. The heel command is we're in a little box right here, okay? His job is to stay in that box. Our job is to help him stay in that box. So we're not going to run around and do a jump stop. He's going to fly right by us because he can't read our mind. We're not going to turn and stop because once we start turning, depending on the direction we're turning, he's either going to be lagging behind or almost in front of us. We're going to always come out, level out, come up to a slow stop, and then he should sit. Once he sits, he should hold it. Heel. So I'm going to come straight to you. We stop. He sits. What a good boy. And he's holding the sit at the same time. So hand signal again, heel. We come in, watch when I step off. See how he comes right back? Yeah, that boy. I turn this way, see how he stays in. And notice when I came through the curve. No, sit. So he did lag a little bit the last time. He did that time. So we're gonna do it again, heel. Good boy, heel. So why did I do it twice in a row? Good boy, break. Because anytime he messes up and it's something we need to work on, we keep coming right back to it over and over, at least two, three times in a row to show him what we want and that he has to perform it, okay? So, so very important. Uh, you notice, one more time, right here, sit. Good, he actually was turned that way and turned to come in. Good boy, break. We practice the on-lease recall. We do hundreds of them, okay? One of the requests that you had was talking about off-lease recall. First of all, we never ever give our dog a command off-leash unless we know he's coming. Say, Jim, that sounds stupid. If I knew he was coming, we wouldn't have a problem. Well, guess what? When we get a certain distance away from us, he realizes we don't, or thinks, we don't have the authority that we have when we're right here. Okay? Remember, right now, because we have to repeat ourselves from time to time, we don't necessarily have the authority right here that we're going to have uh, 20 feet away. It's going to be even worse. So we must gain obedience tight. 
and then when he's out off leash, if you're in a fenced in yard or even in your house, okay, you get the point of he's looking at animals and stuff like that, looks like squirrels, but uh, pretend like we're off leash, but when he's out away from you, you don't tell him to come unless you know he's going to come. So what we do is we cheat. We start trying to brainwash or subliminally train him to want to come. So because he is treat motivated, uh, he'll hopefully come for the treat. So what I'll do is this. Yoshi, hey buddy, come. Notice, good boy, Frank. He uh, came to me off leash. I don't mind if he sits to me or not. It's not a big deal. On leash, I want him to sit every time. Off leash, I don't care if he sits when he comes. But what we want to do, as you notice, he's looking at a squirrel, and what happened? Yoshi, hey buddy, come. Good boy, bro. He broke off, it looks like it's a cat. He broke off the cat and immediately came to me. That's what we want. Also notice I didn't tell him to come out there. I got his attention, had a tree, and he turned around and started running to me. Why did he do that? Because we've been practicing recall on a short leash and on a simulated long leash over and over and over. And at some point in time, it becomes reflex. We never ever call him to us off leash and do something that may seem like a negative to him when he gets here, okay? What could be a negative besides punishing him? One could be taking him in and putting him up, okay? He said, well, you're getting ready to leave me. Why should I want to come to you? So when our dog makes the commitment to coming to us, we pet him, we love him, we make it look like it's one of the best things in the world, and then we move on to something else. And then you may take a minute or two to put distance between, eh? put distance in between of the come command and you making him do something he may not like to do, like go in and be put up. I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you have questions about it, any of you, if you have uh, questions about it, you pick up the phone and you give me a call on that, okay? So he's in a sit already, it doesn't matter, down. Hand signal from the side is just like that. I couldn't remember if I did it. Sit, right back up, sit, come on. Good boy, let's go. Sit, from in front, good boy. Right. I think that, uh, let's go, good boy. So we've talked about the sit, we've talked about the down, we've talked about the heel, we've talked about the come, we've talked about the place. Uh, I can't think of anything uh, right off except for maybe, and I think he does this anyway pretty well for you, we talked about it the other day, is to load up. There's a command that we use called load up. Load up can be used to get into a vehicle. Heck, load up can be used to uh, get on a piece of furniture. You have to decide if there are qualifications inside if your dog can get on the furniture or not when he wants to. If not, then you give him, come on buddy, load up. Ah, boy, good boy. Great. And then when it's ready to get off, you break him, let's go and go from there. Load up is the command to jump up and hop up, okay? I forgot that. Real important to use that. The, the thing about load up is, or getting on furniture at home, please be the leader. Be in control. Don't think you're the leader. You know, know you're the leader. And how are you going to know it? By what he does, okay? It's important. We never, ever bite more than we need to, but we must provide a consequence. Uh, most of my clients that come here, I'll put the collar on them. If we use the little bitey collar, which I like to use, I use this on dogs from uh, 10 pounds to 150 pounds, or the martingale, or a flat collar. It all depends on the dog and, and where they are in their life with what we use. Uh, properly used, all of them are fantastic, very humane training tools. Improperly used, even a flat collar can do damage to a dog. And you'll know that by hearing a dog cough and gagging when you see a dog walking down the street on a leash and he's pulled. If you need me, 336-945-3232. If uh, my website's Jim Hodges Dog Training .com, Facebook Jim Hodges Dog Training, Facebook.com forward slash Jim Hodges Dog Training. I'm here. Call me. There's never a charge if you come to me. He can be a good guy on his obedience, but for anything and everything that you're dealing with in life, it starts with obedience. And why? Because in, with obedience, you can get him to listen in mind in the moment and gradually move out to other areas.
Thank you and God bless. Good boy.